Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth and I will be explaining to you in simple terms how having diabetes can affect our kidneys and lead to kidney disease. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Angelica Rowasa, and I am a practicing nephrologist here in Manila, in the Philippines. I also teach at the University of Santo Tomas. I am a professor and I am the chair of the Department of Physiology. Uh, and I also teach in internal medicine. I practice uh, nephrology at the University of Santo Tomas Hospital, among others. <laughs> I also uh, see patients at St. Luke's Medical Center in Global City. The kidneys are very important organs in our body. So when the kidneys start to fail, we will expect a lot of metabolic problems. Uh, waste products will build up. Uh, the levels of sodium and potassium, phosphorus and calcium in our systems may go haywire. We will have fluid buildup in our body. Many of our patients will become hypertensive and uh, be, they become anemic also. So we can see now how important the kidneys are. Now, uh, chronic kidney disease is a growing worldwide health problem. There's a crisis, so to speak. Among the different diseases, it is not the communicable diseases anymore that are really creating havoc in the population of the world, but rather the non-communicable diseases, of which chronic kidney disease is one of them. The global estimated prevalence of chronic kidney disease is about 13.4%. Now, together with end stage, so that is the point where your kidneys are not functioning anymore and you will need some form of renal replacement therapy or what we call dialysis or transplantation that can range from about 5 to 7 million. Only 10% of the patients who really need dialysis are able to access it because it is not widely available. For one, some countries do not have the resources for renal replacement therapy and other countries do not have enough money. Uh, the financial burden is very great. So most of the patients who are able to afford it will come from the affluent countries, whereas about 20%, so two out of 10 of these patients who are dialyzing are those coming from the uh, lower middle income countries. So we can see now the, the social and disparity now of the disease that the disease uh, uh, creates in the, in the global scenario. Now, among other things, patients who develop chronic kidney disease are also at high risk of developing cardiac events. They will die of a heart problem or they will become sick, they get hospitalized. So together with uh, cardiovascular disease and end-stage renal disease, this contributes to a lot to premature death uh, in the global population. Now, they will also be the diseases that are undergoing epidemic proportions in the world today. For example, we have diabetes and hypertension, obesity, and the aging population also contribute to the higher levels of chronic kidney disease that we are seeing today. So it is important, therefore, that we have preventive strategies uh, throughout the world. What do we have to do? We have to diagnose these patients early and start treatment early. At a certain point, it is already irreversible, but we, what we can try to do will be to delay progression of the kidney damage. One of the diseases that contributes to the high numbers of chronic kidney disease in the world today is diabetes. Now, the International Diabetes Federation estimated in 2017 that there are 425 million people with diabetes. And that is projected in the next 25 years, in 2045, to double to almost 630 million people. So many of these diabetics are people living in low and middle income countries, of which the Asians 
uh, will belong to many of the Asian countries will belong to that uh, majority coming from Southeast Asia about 82 million and the Western Pacific no? it's about 159 million people now um, uh, diabetes uh, contributes to kidney damage because along the course of diabetes in the beginning there is a stage where the kidneys start to work harder there's what we call hyperfiltration and as time goes on the filtering units of the kidneys uh, will one by one start to become scarred and uh, we call that glomerulosclerosis and over time as the kidney disease progresses, the, the remaining viable filters will start to overwork. So at the end of the day, uh, when the entire kidney finally gives up, that is when we enter a stage called end-stage kidney disease. And at that point in time, patients will have to be uh, will have to undergo some form of renal replacement therapy where the kidney function is now replaced by artificial methods like dialysis or if a donor kidney is available then the patients will have to undergo a kidney transplant. So it's very important now to realize that in order to avoid chronic kidney disease diabetes contributes to about one half of the causes of uh, chronic kidney damage and end-stage kidney disease, we have to control diabetes. When a patient has diabetes, uh, unfortunately, in the initial stages and the kidney is starting to get damaged, there is nothing that the patient will really feel, feel. The initial stages when the kidney starts to overwork, that is when the glomeruli or the filtering units of the kidney become leaky and we start to secrete or to uh, uh, some proteins. That is when small amounts of protein start to leak into our urine. So many of us are not aware of that, but uh, it is there already. So it is very important for us to, if you are diabetic, to have yourself screened for the presence of protein in the urine. Along the way, as the kidneys, the filtering units of our kidneys now will start to become scarred. Uh, the, the amount of uh, waste product that is being excreted into our urine now becomes compromised and will start to build up in our body. And the, the best way to, to measure that will be to check your blood and determine the serum creatinine because creatinine is one of the examples of the waste products of that our body generates in metabolism that we are supposed to excrete into our urine. So as the creatinine levels start to rise, uh, what doctors will do these days is use the serum creatinine value to estimate the glomerular filtration rate, which is the filtration capacity now of the different filtering units of your kidney, which we call glomeruli. So those are the two things that will tell us now that our kidneys are starting to get damaged by diabetes. Number one, you look at the amount of protein in the urine. And number two, you will look at the glomerular filtration rate, which you will compute using a formula to, uh, from the serum creatinine. So it is by these two um, parameters that we are able now to stage how badly affected the kidneys are by diabetes. Patients with diabetes as the cause of their chronic kidney disease may need some more intervention than other patients with chronic kidney disease. Uh, among other things, we have to try to control their sugars. That's a very essential. We control the blood sugar. This will be the best way to prevent continuing damage to the kidney. Um, to, in order to control sugar, we have to understand that lifestyle is a very important element there. So that will mean diet, exercise, and if needed, you have to take the medicines that you need to control your sugars and we want to keep it at levels that your doctor will prescribe for you that will be best for you number two patients with uh, kidney damage and diabetes will almost always also have hypertension so high blood pressure should be controlled how do you do that again it is the diet salt in the diet is very important to regulate and then you have to take again 
your blood pressure medications. Among all the blood pressure medications, there are some that we preferentially want to use as long as there are no contraindications. And your doctor, again, will be the first best person to tell you what kind of blood pressure medication you should be taking. Uh, number three will be looking at the protein in the diet. Uh, we have to limit the amount of protein we take and we have to take good quality protein. So we have to take in protein that has essential amino acids, meaning to say these are the amino acids that the human body, animals need in order to have good functioning of our cells. Now, if there are any symptoms that we encounter, like uh, difficulty in passage of urine, we have to consult our doctors also right away because there could be an infection or some form of obstruction which have to be treated also so that we do not add to the damage that diabetes already causes to our kidneys. Um, we should also be very careful about our intake of over-the-counter medications like pain medications. Always use them under the supervision of our doctor. And we have to watch our levels of cholesterol because uh, uh, it is not really strictly proven in, in big studies, but there has been an association seen with the levels of cholesterol and the ongoing kidney damage. So those are the things that are most important to remember. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.